Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I hope you guys are all doing well today. For those of you that are new to our page, um, my family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho. Uh, we are 100% solar powered and we educate on our lifestyle, um, on our faith-led preparedness, wilderness survival, autism, and also my health journey with breast implant illness, among so many other things. But I enjoy getting on here every Wednesday on our Facebook Live and just sharing my thoughts on life, uh, sharing our journey, sharing what we do here on our homestead in an effort to help educate others to be more prepared as well as to uh, walk out our faith. So I'm really grateful to have you guys joining me today and I uh, can't believe we are so close to Christmas already. Good morning, Miss Holly. It is, it is just crazy to me how fast this year has gone. So how are you guys today and what exciting and new uh, do you have to be thankful for? Would love to hear. We have a lot to be thankful for. Um, last week when I was talking with you, I shared with you that our water pump had gone out. And after I was done talking with you, I had actually taken it apart and cleaned it and messed with the wiring and was hoping that I could get it up, but I did not have success. Um, the blessing is though, on Wednesday, uh, I found out that the new pump was already delivered and uh, had been expected the next Monday. So that was quite the blessing. Um, was We had water, just wasn't coming through the pipes in the house. So uh, it's always nice when you have running water. Uh, you tend to get a little spoiled by that, but carrying in the buckets was just as nice and heating it on the wood stove and on the, on the uh, uh, stove for a, a bath was just fine too. Took me back to uh, a little house on the prairie for a little while there. Um, but another big blessing is that Saturday um, afternoon, the mountain man and I went out uh, elk hunting. Good morning, Miss Tammy, and good morning, Miss Shelley. Um, we went out elk hunting muzzleloader uh, in muzzleloader season, and we were getting down to the nitty gritty and. Uh, Right before uh, the end of the day, uh, a cow walked out 50 yards away from me and was able to fill our tag. So I am super excited. This is the first year ever that we have been able to fill all of our tags. Uh, we each got an elk and we each got our buck. Um, the mountain boy was unable to hunt this year. He didn't even purchase his tags and his license because he didn't think he'd have the opportunity he would have had a couple days in thank during Thanksgiving, but it would have been quite the rush. So he's concentrating on what's more important right now, and that's okay. And we have plenty of meat to last us till next hunting season, which is what we were uh, shooting for. So huge, huge blessing. We have heated bath water on the stove made the bath even more special. Absolutely, it did. It actually did. And little bit of romance to that whole situation. I mean, it was chaotic a little bit. Um, I had just finished cleaning up the kitchen, but I was still um, cleaning up the turkey from Thanksgiving and getting everything, you know, all kinds of messy stuff. And as soon as I was finished with it all, but didn't clean it up was when the water pump went. So I just ended up with this nasty disaster, but you know, it wasn't the end of the world and I moved on. Um, no meat worries this year, exactly, Shelley. I know, and that is a huge comfort because the last two years we did run out um, prior to hunting season, and in our circumstances, it was a little tough because we couldn't afford to buy meat. And the mountain man has an extremely high metabolism. He is constantly, you know, moving and doing heavy labor, so he needs meat. You know, the potatoes will fill the spots, but he needs meat. It's quite clear. <laughs> So that is a huge, huge blessing. And I'm just excited uh, for our holiday season. It's gonna be a really special one here this year. Good morning, Terry. And uh, all these years, we haven't really had any of our family here for Thanksgiving and Christmas. They're 2,500 miles away. 
Normally my in-laws come during hunting season, but this year it just didn't work out that way. Uh, so they will be joining us for Christmas. The mountain boy will be here for Christmas and it'll just be fun and we'll kind of create some new traditions. I've held off getting my Christmas tree. I do like getting the Christmas tree and just having it in here with the lights on and the decorations. Um, but our focus for the holiday season is of course Jesus. Uh, but I just like to decorate and my mother-in-law likes to decorate and get into the season as well. So I know that we will have a really uh, joy-filled time and I'm very excited about that. And I wanted to mention today, I am going to do one last Facebook Live this year. That sounds so crazy. I'm going to do next week, and then I'm going to take a break, and I want to see too. Let me see when the, what the calendar looks like here, and I will continue on those sediments. Um, I have my calendar hidden on my iPad. Huh. I'll have to find it in a second. Um, so I'll go back there. I just saw Terry said something, so let's see what Terry has to say. And my fingers are still not working. on this machine. Okay, he says, good morning, dear friend. I hope you and your family are doing well. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed Christmas. Thank you, and the same to you, Terry. And Terry, we are praying for you heavily, for you and June, and um, Terry needs some extra prayers. His uh, cancer uh, has returned, and he needs uh, prayers for this journey. So please continue to lift Terry daily and, and his wife, June. Also, if you guys could lift Diana in prayer today too. She is in New York visiting family and she got sick and she is missing out on visiting with her grandchildren. So if you could just please pray for her, that would be so fabulous. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find my calendar here real quick. And let me see here. Today's a good day also, by the way. 23 years ago today, I gave birth to my mountain boy, who is now 23. That's just insane. I can't believe how the time has flown by, but it was a good day, and he is a good egg, and I am really excited for him at school, and um, just blessed to have such a good young man. Howdy. Howdy. Did you get anything? No. Okay. And the mountain man has appeared. I'm trying to find the calendar because I wanted to show it to express something to you guys and I forgot to look it up before I jumped on here. So you guys need to tell me what you guys are thankful for today and um, also I would love to know what it is that you guys enjoy making as far as handcrafted gifts for the holidays. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're able to join for at least a little while, Diana. I just ask everybody to be praying for you, and hopefully tomorrow will be a better day for you. But I'm glad you're on here. So share with me some of the different things that you guys enjoy doing as far as handcrafted and homemade gifts for the holidays. And I wanted to also put it on... Um, Put it out there for next week. Next week we are going to do a Christmas cookie recipe swap. So I want you to come with your favorite recipe or recipes and you can share them in the comments and everybody can get new recipes from each other. Um, I have several I would like to share but I love baking, I love trying new recipes and I thought that would be something fun to do. Oh thank you Shelly. Shelly said happy birthday to Austin. And uh, let's see here. I can't find the calendar, so I will. We will address that later. But I will be doing um, next week. Will be my last Facebook Live for the year, and then I will let you know next week when I'm going to be jumping back on. I also want to encourage you guys to join me on my podcast this Friday. I will be interviewing my very dear friend um, Melissa, and I uh, are are so like minded and have formed a wonderful friendship. And she has her new book out, The Family Garden Plan. It is uh, available for pre-order right now um, on Amazon. So you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash family garden plan. And that is in the description below. 
Um, but this book is absolutely fabulous and I am so excited to have my hands on it. And I wanted to share it with you guys briefly today. I'm gonna do a review on it uh, probably on Instagram. I wanna try out Instagram's IGTV. So I'm gonna do an interview or a review of this on, on Instagram TV. And I will be interviewing Melissa on Friday. So definitely uh, get in on that because she is a wealth of information. We live very similar. They are not um, off grid, but as far as our mentality and our views on life, it's very much the same. And as far as our passion for feeding our family, it's right up there. So uh, she's a great inspiration and a lot of fun to uh, spend time with. So come join me for that on Friday. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Tammy says, there we go. I sow things for gifts. I am thankful for the financial blessings we have received this week. The Lord turned what would have been major expenses into not so big ones. How awesome is that? God is so, so good. And I have seen your sewing gifts. She sews a lot of skirts and dresses. She she makes the dresses for her daughters and they are just fabulous. So she is definitely um, handy with the hand stitching as well as so the sewing machine. I think most of the stuff you do though is hand stitched, isn't it, Tammy? And it's just beautiful. Diana says, cross stitch crafts, homemade spice blends, and our homemade barbecue sauce. We have a friend who would drink it if his wife would let him. <laughs> That's funny. That's very funny. And I totally get that. Um, and I have seen Diana's cross stitch crafts. Uh, to me, it goes beyond craft. It's, it's more like a mural uh, or a painting. I mean, she does very huge cross stitch pieces and it is the entire, uh, cloth is cross stitched. It is, it is just beautiful. And I have to say, I would love the barbecue sauce recipe, unless of course that that is a, uh, secret. We make hot sauce every year. I make a uh, hot sauce with 42 habaneros in each batch. And that is one of the things that we gift pretty regularly. We were gifting our honey for a while too. Um, yesterday I was actually making um, some things for our store. I was working on um, my recipe cards that I sell and I was making candles. And I don't know if you guys can see that. I think you can. This is palm wax, and uh, this is these are the candles that we will be selling on the website. But it looks like a snowflake. It is just beautiful. I love the way palm wax um, hardens. And what happens with palm wax is when you melt it down, it goes back into that same crystallized format, and um, they burn very, very long. So for us. The way we enjoy burning candles, it is a great wax to be using. It's also um, a lot better for you uh, than any of the other waxes, including soy. Uh, there was always a big hype on soy being one of the best candle waxes and, and for longevity, but palm wax actually has that beat, and I really, really like it for its... Uh, it doesn't have a lot any odor, and it doesn't put out any toxins when you're burning it, so I really like that. I also use hemp... Um, Wicks. Okay, I am here we go. Tammy says, usually this year I am behind, so using so I'm using the machine. Understand. Yes, Diana's cross stitch are definitely beautiful. Tammy has seen them also. She says the hot sauce is awesome. Thank you. Yes, our hot sauce actually has to go out with a warning. It is not like your other hot sauce where you just put it on and have an abundance. You have to use a knife and you have to gently drip it on your food because if you get too much, you'll be drinking a gallon or so of water. It depends on who's eating it. This is true. He, oh, <laughs> one of our friends nicknamed it Gizzard Twitch. <laughs> that just came to mind. A dear friend of ours, John, oh my gosh, he's so funny, but he nicknamed it Gizzard Twitch. We nickname all kinds of things, so that was very fitting that he chimed in on that. But the mountain man's got like an iron gut for the most part. So he eats hot sauce on every meal. I think ice cream too, right? No. Oh, 
<laughs> Not that far. Not that far. All right. Okay, Shelly says she knits slippers, hats, mittens, uh, cowls. I will be making cookies for some and maybe trying some homemade after eights and peanut butter cups. Oh, yum. You know, I've actually thought about making peanut butter cups. I have cocoa butter and I, w I love vanilla chocolate or white chocolate. And I was thinking about actually doing that today and using um, some of my, uh, oh, I can't think what they're called, but my smaller containers to put them in, make, make them, and then put them in the freezer so they easily come out. I was contemplating that. Um, Tammy says, so, so true, surprise JJ. She's referring to the hot sauce. <laughs> Diana says, I'm a sissy when it comes to hot foods. I actually like hot foods, but I have to just be cautious. But I do like our hot sauce. I also make a hot mustard, and I forget right now what the amount of habaneros are that go in that. But it actually, there's no horseradish in it, but it tastes more of like a horseradish mustard than a hot mustard. However, like three years ago, I made some, and the hobs were so incredibly hot, I can't even touch it. The guys love it, but I can't touch it. Good morning, Angela. We are sharing right now what we enjoy making as far as homemade and handcrafted gifts. And I have seen Shelly's work too. Shelly does amazing, amazing things. And she is like the knitting queen. That's what she has, spends her time doing a lot in the evenings. And, and uh, she prepares way ahead of time throughout the year making her Christmas gifts, which is extremely smart. I am scrambling in some cases right now, but our year has been crazy. But I, I love the way Shelly does her things and, and plans way ahead. That's very smart. Shelly says, I always make homemade caramel corn and Rocky Road candy. Ooh, yum. That sounds really good. And you just made me like totally go back and reminisce. My grandparents used to have parades that would go through their town, and one of the things they would throw was caramel corn, um, balls of caramel corn. And uh, of course they were wrapped up or in a baggie or something, but that was something the ladies there in town would make and that was something that they would throw out. Of course today you can't do that, I'm sure, but it was something they did when I was young. And the Rocky Road candy sounds really good. I'm sure that piqued the mountain man's interest because he's a Rocky Road ice cream kind of guy. So is your dad too. You never had that before? No. Grandma used to make that. Am I uncultured? Yeah, I think so. Oh my gosh. Shelly, if you would share the recipe with me so I'm not as uncultured, that would be good. <laughs> yeah, Grandma used to make that quite a bit. Oh, yeah, cool. Very cool. That's another fun thing, too, is getting recipes from our parents and grandparents. I have some recipe. They're little notebooks that were handwritten by great-great-grandmothers and... I think I have two of them, and um, it's always so interesting and funny to read how they um, wrote out their, their recipes. My grandmother, my favorite recipe that I will be sharing, my grandma's um, thing for Crisco was oleo. She'd refer to it as oleo, or her margarine or butter as oleo, and, and they used uh, the butter-flavored Crisco in her cookies. Of course, I totally uh, changed that and use our Earth Balance butter in there instead. But, um, you know, you, you can modify the old recipes so they are healthier. Um, sometimes, sometimes you lose the, the good flavor in them. But my, my goal always is to keep going till I perfect it. So I perfected my grandmother's um, sour cream cookie recipe. And I actually modified that recipe at Thanksgiving and added pumpkin. And oh my gosh, they were so, so good. They're super, super moist cookies and they are just a favorite. So that is something I, I have done is I bake cookies and gift them. Uh, we used to do that for the teacher and teachers and the, and the uh, bus driver and the mail lady. And um, I'd also make breads. I have little loaf pans and I would make mini um, zucchini breads and banana breads and friendship breads. Um, so I, I enjoy baking. I enjoy gifting that. Something else I do is um, I would start paper whites and, oh geez, what is the other oh, Christmas flower? Not the poinsettia, it's red. 
can't, I totally went blank. But anyway, I would start those flowers and gift them to people and they would put them on their tables or have them in their home and, and they would actually um, bloom for Christmas. So that was always fun. I enjoyed doing that. Let's see here. Uh, Angela says, goat milk soap and Christmas cookies. Nice. Nice. Yes, I am going to be working on soap next. I did candles yesterday. I forget how many I did. Um, gosh. <laughs> yeah, there's a, some in the box, too. It was close to 50. He's counting. <laughs> He's counting them for me. But 30. 30. 31. 2. 33. 33 candles I made yesterday, and then I have a ton more to make, but that was what I got done to start. Um, we have unscented candles, we have lavender candles, and we have peppermint candles right now. So, excited about that. I'm going to add an orange uh, candle, citrus. Uh, I'm keeping the scents very uh, simple and very natural. Um, so I enjoy doing that. I enjoy making my soaps. Um, one year I made, there's a local antique store and, um, I found a whole bunch of old mini flower, um, bags and I purchased those and I put, um, a lotion bar, uh, soap and a candle in those and I embroidered them. I had never embroidered before, but I had the, the hoops and stuff. So I decided, and the floss, so I decided I would learn how to embroider, and that worked out really well. Those made very, very good gifts and were sought after, but I only had so many bags. Um, I love the old flower sacks, so I look for them all the time. Sometimes I will come across just the fabric. Uh, so I have quite a bit in my arsenal, but those make great gifts. <clears throat> I also like doing gift baskets. That was something I was doing for a while. We bake cookies for our neighborhood and for the mailman and the UPS person. Nice. Our UPS guy, a couple years back, he um, raises his own cattle. And he had a cooler in the back of the UPS truck. And every time he delivered something to the valley, um, everybody got a, a pack of his hamburger. And it was really good. So that was that was a unique gift. He, he was a unique person. He's no longer. He is retired. Um, but just, just neat. It's just, and I like the homemade gifts. It's not that a purchase gift does not have value, but I, I always feel, um, very touched by homemade gifts. The mountain man has made all kinds of different gifts for people. We've gifted his hooks and different things. We have a couple, um, packages to go out that are, are gifts to people with some of the hooks he's made. So it's just, it's neat, and it's neat to see what everybody um, is capable of or enjoys doing. I know many of you ladies just love crafting, and that is something that I enjoy. I actually got my knitting out the other night. I was so excited. I started back up on a dish rag that I started probably this time last year. But just with everything being as crazy as it is, that's how it goes. But it felt really, really good to be able to uh, get back into that and knit. Um, I usually crochet or knit a few things. I'm going to make a salve. That's Angela. Awesome. Yeah, I love making all kinds of... I used to do lip balms and salves, and we've gifted those too. Uh, I did a comfrey salve um, early on when we were here. And... Uh, I do know how to crochet. I don't crochet as well as I knit. I need to work on my tension. I would love to be able to knit doilies. My um, Glenn's grandmother is amazing at uh, crocheting and doilies, and she has gifted me quite a few. She made a hair piece for me for our wedding and uh, made the uh, piece that went around my flowers. So she does really neat things too, but I've got to work on my crocheting. I machine embroider also, but I haven't done it in a while. Oh, very awesome. Do you have one of the machines that you can actually import a graphic into it, or are you limited on what you are able to do with your machine? That's pretty cool. I, I love being able to uh, do that kind of stuff too. 
we had a machine, but we chose to uh, sell that at our yard sale. So um, I don't have that option right now. I wanted to see here too. Um, oh, I love this verse as well. I wanted to share this with you guys. Romans 15, 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I just happened to see that in my notes. I know that's kind of random, but I wanted to share that with you. And my next question to you guys is this, with all your crafting, in addition to gifting it, do you guys sell it? And if so, how do you guys go about selling it? Do you sell it locally? Do you have Etsy stores? Um, just curious. Say what? Etsy stores. Etsy. Get with the program, Stan. Who's she? Oh. I don't know. You never mentioned her before. No? No, I didn't. I didn't mention her before. Oh, that's what you're doing. Um, just curious because if you have stores, be sure to share them in the comments below so yeah. people can check out your wares. Yeah. Uh, Angela says, yes, my mom and I actually have an online business where we sell the software for a person's own machine. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Do you do embroidery for other people? Just curious. Um, and I wanted to mention also, Diana shared that she was watching a series on Focus on the Family, um, and I totally forget their name, Milan and Yurkovich, I think it is, but I forget, it's Milan and his wife. Anyway, they write, they have written the book, um, How We Love, and then another book, How We Love Our Kids. And Diana had mentioned them last week, so I'm always curious for new resources. So, of course, I researched that and was watching some of their materials actually last night. And they are fabulous. I had mentioned uh, last week, or over the last couple weeks with this marriage tips, was that you know, oftentimes we bring our own baggage to the table when we get married. So we have things that um, may not be good or that we need to work through. And that is actually what they, they educate on and share on and have a method to overcoming some of these idiosyncrasies that we may get as a result of our upbringing. And uh, their book is fabulous. They also have a workbook, and I'm contemplating on doing something with that moving forward. But I wanted to mention that, and the link for that is down below in the resources. I think it's under books. And again, all of our resources that we've been talking about are down below and um, are available to you guys to research or copy and paste and keep for your reference. Um, but really great resources. Good morning, Miss Leah. So, I just want to commend you guys for all of the talents that you have and that you utilize because so many people have the desire to do things, but they never delve into it because they're more afraid of failure or not being able to accomplish things. But you've got to start somewhere. And, and if you have the nudge and desire to do something, give it a try. Angela, oh, here we go. Diana says, I've tried selling on Facebook and it crashes, but haven't had much luck with that. One thing I'm learning is it is so helpful to be out in the um, world where you're going to get a little more notice. For example, um, Etsy or eBay, uh, where you have the opportunity to get more traffic. Um, we are actually going to start selling our uh, wares on eBay. I have a store set up in Etsy, and we've gotten quite a few uh, orders for the Mountain Boys moccasins on there. Um, I don't have all the items listed on there, but I wanted to give eBay a try and see how we fare there. Sometimes you have to lose a little bit of your money, but it's it's inexpensive advertising if you look at it in that regard and if you can draw people back to either your website or a store that you might have um, Etsy is not extremely expensive uh, I think it's like a dollar or two a month so it's it's really helpful to have it out on those platforms that have much greater visibility but then also to bring them back to something that might be more personal for yourself such as a website that's what we're doing but I just wanted to encourage that because you guys 
do amazing things. And it's a great way to make extra money or that may lead into something that would be a full-time gig. I know a lot of women out there um, and men, but I've seen a lot of women who make jewelry or make bags and they've started out small and all of a sudden things have just escalated to the point that they actually need a warehouse and so it's pretty awesome to see what is available you know we have such a greater opportunity today with the internet at our fingertips so uh, don't rule those things out okay Angela says doing embroidery for other people is how we started but the web work and other business became too busy and we opened a mall to sell electronic designs that others make. We also digitize things and sell them. That's really awesome. That's really awesome. You should share the link to your business in the comments. Terry says, is the mountain man going to make any of his knives or axes and are you going to sell any of your soaps? I would like to purchase some of them. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, my soaps will be out on the website probably, hopefully next week. Um, and the mountain man is making knives. Um, we don't have any knives listed for sale, but he does custom work for a lot of people on a regular basis. This, this is one that's, I just um, annealed. It still has to be shaped and everything like that, but I'm working on this one for a guy. It still has to get completely shaped. But so. so and and axes will be something in the future too. He's working on a power hammer that will enable him to do quite a bit more. And he needs a little bit of a larger smithy. It's a little dangerous in there. <laughs> right now so we're hoping that when we uh, sell here and rebuild that he will have a larger shop that he can maneuver a little better in uh, he's been he was teaching people for a while out there and it was it was quite dangerous and there's just tight quarters but yes so he does have those options available um, he does make custom knives Terry and the axes will be something in the future they're not really um, um, He's not really able to manufacture them in our current situation right now, but uh, he will be. So thank you. Angela says Etsy has gone up quite a bit. Okay, cool. OregonPatchworks.com. I think I did see that down there below. So you had already been ahead of me. Good girl. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, when I got on eBay, initially I was on eBay when my kids were little and it was so inexpensive and, and easier to sell things and, and get uh, it was just easier to operate uh, it was a different it was a different kind of eBay uh, but things you know things increase in price and and that's how it goes but it is a good way to get your name out there and to be in a place where you will be noticed and be found so keep that in mind please tell him I'm looking okay I will let him know he is still here so he heard that so I'm look. Oh, I'm looking forward to him making some. Okay, awesome. Very awesome. How are I you? Think, Go ahead. I think what I'm going to be doing is probably, unless somebody has a knife design that they really really like and that's what they want, um, I'll make that. But I think as I make them, I'm just going to put them up on the website and. It's kind of a once and done deal unless somebody says, hey, I like, really like that knife and they want another. Or somebody else wants one, then I'll make. But it's just kind of, one of those things is, as I have time, I'm doing it and that. So I think that's probably for right now what I'm going to do unless somebody says, hey, I want I want a custom knife right like this or something. You know, so that's kind of where, where I'm at right now. Cool. How are you feeling, Terry? All right. I would love to see you guys share your some of the pictures of your work down below. Um, that's another uh, great avenue to let people see what you have created. Um, so if you would like to, open platform to share your wares in the comments below. You can share your photos. Um, 
I have been wanting to read a couple things to you. Last week I had such a headache and it did not serve me very well. But I, I have a couple things that I would like to read. I've had these on my agenda for the last couple weeks. So I, I'm going to um, delve into these. Um, if you're still having other comments in regard to the handcrafted things, keep them coming. That's perfectly fine. Um, but I, I uh, found this one in my devotional a couple weeks ago. And it is uh, titled Forgive, and it references Ephesians 4.32. And it starts with Psalms 34.18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. When someone has broken your heart, when somebody you love breaks your heart and betrays your trust, you're in a vulnerable place. And the enemy will use the experience to get you to do four things that will hurt you even more. Derail, your, derail you spiritually and rob you of God's blessing. The first thing that will happen is you'll isolate yourself, alienate, and avoid others. Two, you'll lose your sense of trust and suspect the motives of everyone you meet. Three, cause a root of bitterness to spring up that will impact your relationship with your family and those in your circle of influence. Four, it will make you strike back and get even, rendering evil for evil. Don't do it. Instead, stand on God's word. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. I will turn your mourning into joy. I will comfort them and exchange their sorrow for rejoicing. Those were, uh, that was Jeremiah 31, 13. The spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, recover Recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. That's Luke 4.18. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. That is Ephesians 4.31 and 32. Has someone done you wrong? Forgive them. And keep on forgiving them until you're free in your mind. It is a daily walk that sometimes feels like three steps forward and two back. But if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll get there. I absolutely just love the way they worded that, especially at the end. That um, forgive them and keep on forgiving them until you're free in your mind. And that's basically you know, what I've been trying to explain without the words. Is, is that we, it's just a constant effort. But... It's when you hit that place where you are free in your mind, where when they come to mind, you know, you have empathy or sorrow for them or love for them um, as a result of it. Um, let me see here. Good morning, Gudrun. Angela says, yes, I am feeling better. Thank you. Yes. Last week, that was just really weird. Um, but yes, I rested and I am feeling much better. Thank you. Angela shared Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Enemy tries to isolate, alienate, make us lose trust, cause root of bitterness and make us strike back. Yep. Shelly says, I have decided that if I ever move to an acreage, I would want a small house and many outbuildings or shops so we could have places to work on projects that cannot be done in a home yeah that's exactly what we are focusing on and and you know to be honest you look back on how they used to do things that was often how they did it they had the home and then they had all kinds of little outbuildings um, the spring house the uh, uh, spring kitchen where they would do their canning the blacksmith shop the wood shop you know, so it's not uncommon, and a lot of the people that are building today and creating new homesteads are doing just that. We did the same. We have our, our wood shed and, and our storage shed and the little barn for the animals, and we have the smithy. Um, but moving forward, of course, the shop, because of what we both do and the fact that most of it can't be done in the house, um, it gives us an opportunity to have a place to work. As you can hear him clanging around, he actually brought wood in to do our lanterns so that it would be in a place where it's warm and, and, and could dry out a little more. So that's what he was clanging around. Do you need help? I got her. All right. 
Yeah, we are we are in workshop mode today. I'm punching tin. He's building we building lanterns. We got some more lantern orders, which is such a blessing. And that's a great idea, Shelly. Terry says, I'm doing okay. Haven't decided on doing the radiation treatments yet. That scares me doing so, but working on the recovery from my shoulder surgery. I'm still continuing for my prayers for June and I and not giving up on God to help us. And that's the way you do it. Is we we need to just pull into him, trust his timing, and and keep moving forward. And we will pray for you that God gives you clear direction for your radiation. Um, did you check uh, with your uh, oncologist about the uh, treatment that I mentioned my friend was doing? That's just amazing. And also, guys, um, in addition to keeping Terry in your prayers, please keep Mark in your prayers also. <coughs> our, our friend Pat, who has multiple melanoma, his son-in-law, is in Seattle right now going through stem cell um, harvesting. They harvested... Um, just recently, they got enough to uh, do the uh, transplant, so um, he's, he's going to be there for quite some time, and it's quite the journey, so keep him in your prayers. Oh, it is snowing. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can spin it around so that you can see. Let me see if I can get it to, oh, yep, yeah, maybe. We got a little bit of snow. You Montana folks are going to laugh at us because we certainly didn't get enough to cover the ground yet, but it's snowing right now. I love the big flakes. I love snow. Okay. Squirrel, right? <laughs> but Terry, you can count on our prayers. We will be praying for you and lifting you wholeheartedly. We lift you every day and just keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on Jesus and just keep trusting for his direction and the outcome and I truly believe that seeds were planted while you had your uh, shoulder surgery and I'm sure that God is going to continue to nurture you and June so and I thank you for being transparent and sharing your journey with us because I know you will be helping others along the way okay now we've been talking through the marriage portion of things about submission and how um, that is such a uh, to many it's a horrible word in our society but it's not meant to um, to be that way and it's so misinterpreted but here's a perfect story of how full submission, and this isn't even to husband and wife, but how full submission and, and submitting to God has its rewards. Because as we are submitting to our spouses, we are also submitting to God. We are supposed to submit to our, and to treat our spouses like the church. And, you know, in my mind, you know, that is treating my spouse like God. Terry says, haven't asked about the infusion treatments. Don't know what kind of infusion treatments I need to ask him about. Um, I'll see if I can find out more. Um, the infusion treatment is actually where they are doing an infusion and increasing the capabilities of the immune system naturally. And it's causing the immune system to fight the cancer. Uh, Pat is having great results with that. So I will, I will get more details on that and find out more on that so I can just pass it on. Um, this one starts out, it's called Go Back and Submit. And it references Genesis 16, 9. Go Back and Submit. The Bible says Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar in the desert. And he said, Hagar, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. Hagar obeyed, and when her son Ishmael was born, God said, I have heard you. I will surely bless him, make him fruitful, and greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers, and I will make him into a great nation. Most of us don't relish the idea of submitting or surrendering, and God sent Hagar back to a hard place that day. 
But when she obeyed, he blessed her. Note the question the angel asked her, because it may be one God's asking you as well. Where have you come from and where are you going? If he is, stop and consider your answer. God who knows the end from the beginning and who brings good things out of bad has your best interest at heart. Even though it's hard to do, if you'll obey him, he will bless you. He'll give you grace to endure and strength for the struggle and do things in your life that can't be accomplished any other way. By trying to escape your present situation, you may be running from the lesson God wants to teach you and the rewards that lie beyond it. So the word for you today is go back and submit. And, and then when I read the next one, you'll just be blown away. I've been saving that one I just read for the last three weeks. The one I'm going to read to you next, I just uh, had crossed my path last night. Absolutely, Terry. Diana says, I'd like that information for Jenny. She starts radiation in January. Absolutely. Absolutely, Diana. Um, it is a, an experimental um, protocol, but I know how harsh radiation and chemo is on the body. And um, there are other alternatives. There are a lot of natural alternatives, but people shy away from those out of fear. But I've seen such amazing, amazing results with the natural treatments. Um, my friend Starry is going through that right now. And, you know, she's getting a lot of ridicule as a result of it. Um, but she also has multiple myeloma. And that is an incurable cancer. So um, they, typically when they're diagnosed, they only ha are given five years. And through the treatments that she's doing, I know that she is going to be on this earth a lot longer than five years. Um, it's really amazing what's out there. So there's a lot of natural, but this is actually um, a, a medical treatment, but it is, it is building up the immune system to fight the cancer on its own, which I just think is a tremendous, and I'm just so glad it's out there. To hear that people with that have been given uh, chemo and radiation as their treatment, that they may have this as an option moving forward, because it's just it's it's, it's so less harsh on the system. Good morning, Miss Janet. So I will get that information for both of you. So we talk about preparedness, self -re self reliance, resilience, and. Um, this is actually something that was written by Pat's daughter, uh, Mark's wife, uh, and I, I just couldn't help but share it today. Her words are just very powerful, and um, I think that it's something that all of us could learn from. Uh, specifically, one of the things she said just really reached out to me, but she says, resilience is the catchword these days, whether about a medical crisis, college students, the economy or spiritual direction. Be resilient, develop resilience, teach your children how to be resilient. The underlying message is clear. Figure out how to adapt because adversity is coming. But it's not that adversity looms out there like a monster in the forest waiting to snatch you unaware. I think adversity is the norm. Most of life is a challenge, perhaps sometimes internally in ways that other people cannot see or understand but in other ways, quite external and obvious. I think about a book that my parents had when I was growing up, M. Scott Peck's The Road Less Traveled. The author's main point was that a life without challenge doesn't produce a person of good character. It produces uh, an easy life, uh, results in an ethically and morally lazy person. My parents talked about this book as they were reading it together and then to us, myself and my sisters. They wanted us to understand that challenge, adversity, setbacks, failure, and grief were not aspects of life to be avoided, but those precise moments that would illuminate God's grace and build our character. I will forever be grateful to my parents for instilling the belief that walking over the coals may exceptionally be unpleasant but necessary if you want to get to the other side. The flip side of developing resilience is the tendency to become a martyr, to hype your sacrifice as something unique and heroic. Instead, I tell myself again that if challenge and adversity is the norm, then resilience and sacrifice is also normal. Staying in reality's lane is, helpful, is a helpful check against ego and allowing the stress and sorrow to overwhelm your perspective. 
I don't say these words flippantly. They are hard earned in my own life. I've worn the St. Vincent de Paul winter coat and eaten the holiday meal delivered by the church. I've sat on the edge of hospital beds, including my own, impatiently waiting for the promised grace to arrive. I see this stress wrought by accident, illness, and not the success I'd hoped for adventures in the eyes of my children. Most importantly, I have learned that my family is not special in the way that adversity has visited. Other people know loss and fear. Other people have lost more. What keeps me really going, though, is not this talk of character and grace, but rather trying to find the humor in the fact that I lose my mind over stupid, silly stuff that is the true adversity in my life. The thing that stands out so greatly in this, I gotta find it. They wanted us to understand that challenge, adversity, setbacks, failure, and grief were not the aspects of life to be avoided, but those precise moments that would illuminate God's grace and build our character. You know, through this whole year and over these last three years, what we have been sharing on our channel is that perspective really makes a difference. And as I'm looking back and recapping on the year and planning for next year and, and finishing some things up for this year, one of the great things that I feel and I realize and I see is how much our perspective has changed. I have always had the pink shady perspective, the positive perspective, looking for the shiny penny in the mire. But that hasn't always been um, the mountain man's viewpoint. And, and we all handle things very differently. And what I've noticed on our YouTube channel, you know, of all three years, this has been the hardest year for us. And when I look back at last year's things, our perspective was different. Our, our communication was different. It was a little bit more gloomy. Um, and as we walk these three years out, our trust has grown so, so greatly. And I look at this year's things that we've shared and how our perspective, as a result of our perspective and our growing faith, there is no fear, there is no worry, there is no gloominess in what we're sharing. And it really, really um, just inspired me. You know, it's kind of cool when you look back at your old self and your old things and you are able to inspire yourself. And also just to see where you were and where you've come to. And I'm sure if you guys did a self-evaluation right now, you would see the same thing is how God has walked you through the strife. And, you know, I've talked often about James 1, 3, or, yeah, James 1, 3, 4, and 5, I think it is, where our endurance is tested and strengthened through our adversity. And the mountain man and I have shared our perspective and point on that as m male and female. But that really, I, I understand now so much why that has always resonated with me because as Colleen has said in, in her words, that it is a requirement for us to be built up and to, to grow and, and to become the person God is trying to build us to be through what we walk through. So I think the words that... Um, that she shared are just so powerful and go along with everything else I was sharing today and have been sharing. And, and you know, some people, you know, you go through just the casual ups and downs, life is pretty good, you're not too affected. And then you have others that are going through different illnesses or different challenges and, and you, you walk through your day to day wondering what's next or what in the world could be coming next after we just went through that kind of thing. You know, and, and as we embrace a great trust in God, 
and our perspective changes. I mean, so much the mountain man and I are, are like, well, then it wasn't supposed to happen or it wasn't meant to be, um, not supposed to have it. It wasn't meant to sell. You know, we view it that God has a plan and it's bigger than we can fathom and he's in control. So we don't lose or skip beats. We just keep moving forward. And like I've shared with you, you know, we do grow tired. We do grow weary. It's very easy. That is our flesh. And, and when you're walking out something hard and it's constant and it's continual, you know, it does, it does get tiring. But it doesn't mean that our faith wavers. And that is something that I want to really, really touch on this new year and really continue to share with you as we walk this out. And uh, next week, I'm going to share our new theme. And I have a challenge for you all for the new year. So I hope you all can still join me next week. And then, uh, like I said, we will, we will, that will be my last Facebook Live for for uh, 2019 and we will pick back up um, in 2020. That's scary. That's like seems like out of, it always seemed out of touch, but here we are, it's 2020. So what are your thoughts on what I have read? Do you struggle with submission? Do you struggle with forgiveness? Um, are you thankful? at times for your adversity because you can see how it's building your character um, do you view it as a norm and I really like that she pointed that out because truly it is it is the norm adversity and, and struggle is the norm and and how we approach it and overcome it is up to us we have that choice but it's also part of the norm and I also like that she says that it keeps her in check and um, keeps her from uh, getting too big in the ego. We all, we all walk through things, and I've shared it many times before, that I struggle sometimes when I'm struggling because I know there's other people that are in a worse situation than I am. But I've also shared with you that everybody's struggle is a struggle, and it's still a struggle to walk through, regardless if it's big or small. So it's learning the perspective, learning, learning how to keep your trust in God as you're walking things out, and, and keep growing in Him. The more we grow in Him, the greater the journey is. And um, I really can't express that enough. It's just an amazing place to be when you are in a low place, but you can take the high road and you see God's grace, you, you are seeking the joy, you are seeing the good around you, and you're not stuck in a bad situation. Uh, we could easily all be stuck in a bad situation. That's an easy thing to do, and the enemy just has a field day trying to keep us in that place. But when we start walking on the high road and, and start changing our perspective and really leaning on God, he loses his foothold, and that's what makes it also really amazing. Um, I enjoy being able to kind of smack him, the enemy, in the face, so because um, he's certainly uh, run us through the ringer and, and tries, and I watch him working on the world, and it's just a scary, scary thing. So, so I would love to have your perspective and thoughts. I'm not sure if you guys are able to continue sharing or not, um, I haven't seen any comments, so hopefully we're still good, but those were my thoughts that I wanted to share with you today, and, um, I can't help but ending with this. I have shared this with you before, the Lone Star Farmstead, um, Christina Sutter. She says that life is a gift given to us by God. What we do with it is our gift to God. So, you know... I think that's some power, those are some powerful words that we could put on our refrigerator, on our mirror, in the bathroom, on our dashboard, in the car. And just remembering that homesteading and marriage are very similar. That it takes time, faith, patience, understanding, love, tenderness, strength, and the willingness to work through the unexpected. And... I feel that the more we focus on loving our spouses and understanding 
and showing them compassion and being submissive to our spouses, the greater um, our marriages and our families will be. I believe that um, as a result of us strengthening our walk and our marriages, that our children will see the results of that. And <clears throat> I think it's also important for us as believers to see the maybe twisted history of our families and being willing to be that person to change history and to change the history of your family and make things different. And I believe that if you are in that situation, the book How We Love is something that you're going to want to get your hands on. Um, it's really impressive. I will share a YouTube link down below when I'm done here so that you guys can watch um, this couple uh, on an interview. It's just, we have, we have great abilities and it's going to take the work of creating new habits to change our perspective, to change our lives, to change the lives of our children, to change our future. But I think that it's something that is very worth our time, very worth our attention and will make our lives so much happier and so much more joy filled. So those are my thoughts today. Let me see here. Terry says, I'm thankful for the pain and tears because it has brought me back closer to God and has helped me to move forward and not worry about the past. The separation from June is really hard and the wait is hard, but I know God is working on us both to strengthen us back together and strengthen our marriage. Thank you, my friend, and for all the prayer warriors for standing up for us in prayer. God bless you all. Absolutely, Terry, and and it is really awesome to feel that growth. It is. There's a lot of times we're in hard places, but when you get that foothold to see God's grace and to see what He's doing, it gives you the courage to keep going, doesn't it? And it gives you the courage to know that He is working in the background. And I've seen that growth in you, and it's really awesome. Those are just. Those are the miracles that come from prayer and from fellowship and from friendship and from supporting one another. And I am just so thrilled and give God all the glory for this community we've formed and, and what is being produced here. So um, we have a very large prayer list down below. I'd like to ask that you keep Terry and June in your prayers and Terry with his cancer. Uh, also Jenny with her cancer and Mark and Pat and uh, continue to pray for Diana to feel better and we can uh, pray praises of thanks for Tammy's financial uh, blessing this week and also Shelly's healing. Shelly is healing nicely and progressing forward and we're so excited for that for her. Um, she will feel like a new person completely very soon and uh, please pray for Zach from the American Homestead. Uh, he lost his wife, uh, Jamie, on Thanksgiving Day, and they have young children. So if you would please pray for them and just lift them up and uh, pray for Ginny and Holly Delbert. Uh, they lost, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jepson, they lost Delbert um, in November also, and he was a very special man. And uh, pray for Intermountain Fur Harvesters as well. Um, he was the president there. It's a, an organization we belong to and uh, one of my web clients. And uh, it was a hard blow. Um, Delbert was a very unique individual and you felt loved by him as soon as you met him. So a lot of people are hurting there and are trying to move forward with things. So if you could help us pray for them as well, I'd so appreciate it. But the list is long and that's a good thing um, that people are reaching out and requesting prayers. You can do so by emailing me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. You can private message me or you can leave your comments down below. You can also pray for uh, Mona and Ken's health. They are having health issues. And uh, just pray for the mountain boy and my in-laws for safe travels and for full traps for the mountain man. And just thank you for your love and, and uh, all you do uh, in our community too as you lift each other up. It's just such a huge blessing. I am going to say a prayer here and you guys can get back to 
Papa, I just thank you for your love and mercy and grace for how you uh, are so present in our lives and how you are answering prayers and, and just comforting and loving all those that are out there in need and just showing yourself and how you are, your promises are such a comfort regardless what we are walking out. And I just ask that you be with everyone present and those that are watching the replay. And just love on them. Let them see your grace and your mercy. Let them see the comfort of your presence. And just help everyone that's in need. Bless them and love them. And just take us into the new year that we may have the perspective to continue to keep our eyes on you, our eyes on the prize. And that our... Our lives will continue to change in a positive direction and that our, our joy and happiness will be in abundance. And we just thank you for what you're going to do in all of our lives. We thank you for how you're going to answer all the prayers on our prayer list. And we just thank you in advance for everything that you're going to do. And we ask this in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being a part of our community. It's really wholesome and it's really amazing and I can feel God's presence. And I just give you guys uh, so much credit for working along with me on this and I give God all the glory. So join me next week. Remember to bring your cookie recipes. We're gonna do the recipe swap. And um, next week I'm gonna share the New Year theme and a challenge for us all. So join me next week. In the meantime, you guys have a fabulous rest of your day, a great week. Stay safe and healthy, and God bless. Love you all.